Hey everybody, it's Fault Fox. Welcome back to my channel. And for today's video, I am attempting to challenge myself to see just how quickly I can smooth a helmet. And I've had this Bo-Katan helmet printed out for what feels like months and I really need to finish it because I know I've mentioned this in previous videos, but all of the Bo-Katan helmets that I've made on this channel, they were commissioned, so I no longer have them. The only one that I still have is the Clone Wars one that I made with a broken arm. And I need to remake this for like what feels like the millionth time to have for my own costume. So my plan for this today at least is to get a layer of UV resin on there to clean it up, get a second layer of UV resin on there and maybe potentially get a third on there. We'll see how things go. I do have things that I need to do today other than just working on this. But the beauty of using UV resin is that you can just paint a layer on, put it outside to let it cure for however long you want it to. I usually let my stuff cure for about 15 minutes out in the sun, but it's not gonna hurt it to be out there any longer. But back to the original idea of this video, I just want to show you every single step. And if I remember, I'm going to put like my phone in front of what I'm doing and have a timer going so that I'm timing every single step. So I can hopefully at the end of the video give you a number of hours that it took me to get it from this state to the finished product getting ready for paint. And yeah, that's enough of me rambling. I'm going to go out to my garage and paint on a layer of resin to this. So let's get started. <laughs> So now that this layer is completely cured, I have taken it inside of my garage. I can leave the garage door open now because I'm not going to be working with any of the liquid UV resin at this point. I'm gonna be taking some isopropyl alcohol. I actually put some into this little bottle right here. This is not accelerator for super glue, thankfully. This is just isopropyl alcohol. I'm gonna spray it all over the helmet. And I know you're probably thinking, and it's why am I using isopropyl alcohol whenever I said in my last video that you can essentially just go right from letting your UV resin cure and then sanding it. You totally can do that, it does work, however, I did notice through my like many experiments that I've been doing behind the scenes here that whenever I sanded the UV resin right after it had cured before doing any kind of isopropyl alcohol on it, it was really gumming up my pieces of sandpaper. And I went through so many pads of sandpaper. So it only took me about five minutes to really go over everything with isopropyl alcohol and then wipe it down. For me, it's kind of worth the trade off, at least for now, because I'm not gonna be using up as much sandpaper. And I just also really like to experiment and see if I end up liking it this way. So I am done spraying that layer of isopropyl alcohol over it and I wiped it down with a little blue shop towel here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go and shut my garage door so it's gonna get dark in here again and then I'm gonna put on a second layer of resin.
All right, so you just saw me put on another layer of UV resin and then I sprayed everything down with isopropyl alcohol. Just something a little bit different because whenever I was applying that second layer of UV resin, I noticed like a little bit of kind of balled up lint from these. Like these blue shop towels don't really give off a lot of lint, but they do give off some. So instead of wiping down with this blue shop towel, I actually sprayed the entire helmet and then let it kind of, you know, evaporate in the sun. And it seems to have done the trick. And once that had all evaporated, I did go over lightly with a blue shop towel just to get any remaining residue on there and it's looking good. So now I am going to do what I'm hoping to be my final UV resin layer. And then we're going to get to some sanding and we're going to see how smooth this is after three layers of resin. So let's start up the timer again. Oh, but before I do that, I do need to go and shut the garage door again. So the total time that it took me to apply all of those layers of resin, so remember that was three layers of UV resin with about 15 minutes to let it cure outside after, it ended up being about an hour and 35 minutes, which isn't too bad considering all I really had to do was paint layers on and let it sit out in the sun. There's also some people who say that you can basically let your stuff sit in the sun for maybe five minutes and it'll be cured. I just like to err on the side of caution and I just, it, 15 minutes has worked for me in the past. So let me know how long you let your UV layers cure down in the comments. If you tend to find any success with letting it cure for like five minutes or so, I would love to hear that. But now what I'm gonna do, since I've got all those layers of UV resin on there, is I'm going to grab my mouse sander and some 120 grit sandpaper and get this as smooth as I possibly can. And just as a quick side note, I mentioned this in the comments of my last video on UV resin, but it appears that the type Type of UV resin you use really affects how well it sands. So for example, I use this Elegoo Mars, um, it's an ABS-like photopolymer resin, and I've been experimenting a lot with some of my Mando and Boca Tan pieces, and I have seen people use as low as 40 grit sandpaper to sand their resin. Now, whenever I did this with the specific resin I was using, it balled up like the resin just balled up and became really fuzzy and it was like ripping through the resin instead of you know sanding it smooth like how i wanted it to and i ended up having to clean a lot of things with kind of scrubber brushes just to get all of that gunk off of there so i came to find through all of this that the sweet spot for me seems to be 120 grit to like 180 grit sandpaper whenever i'm first sanding things down and then i obviously go higher from there to kind of wet sand and things like that so that's one of those other things that i've come to realize is that you really need to experiment with your specific type of resin to see what it likes. And for me, it basically meant that I don't put any type of sandpaper that's lower than 120 grit onto this or else it just creates more work for me in the end. So I'm gonna shut up and turn on that timer again and we're gonna get to sanding.
All right, so a little bit later, I showered and I got something to eat because I realized through working through all of that that I was super hungry and I didn't eat and I was, you know, I basically stuffed my face. But anyways, you don't care about that. It's about three o'clock whenever I'm sitting down to record this ending part of the video. I'm not gonna lie, for only about two hours and five minutes of work, that's how much I've got on my timer here. This looks pretty dang good. So this is what it looks like. And obviously whenever you get a little bit closer, there are some spots that are gonna need a little bit more help in. I, but I don't think it's gonna need as nearly as much help as things that I've done in the past. So if you can see here on the top, I don't know if it'll focus. Anyways, I'll probably put some B-roll on. But on the dome, you can kind of see some circular layer lines still that I'll need to fill in with some Bondo, or maybe I'll even put like a little bit of UV resin on there. I don't know yet. And the one major thing that I'm seeing is that on the side of the helmet, there is one really thick layer line that's still there. And that might actually be something that I can sand down. So obviously I'm not completely finished with this but I did want to create this video just to kind of show you how much base sanding and base smoothing and filling you can get done in just two hours with UV resin. And this is basically ready for the next step of me, you know, just doing a little bit of spot filling, a little bit of hand sanding, and then continuing on to wet sanding. But that'll be for a future video where I will go through the entire process of me taking this from a raw 3D print to a finished painted bo -Katan helmet. So I hope that you'll stick around for that. I hope this type of video was interesting in some way. It was definitely interesting to me to see just how much work I got done in a little over two hours. And even that two hours is really not two hours of work. I also included the amount of time that things cured. I would venture to say that there's about an hour of work that I actually physically did on this piece and then the other hour of it was just you know letting things cure in the sun or letting the filler primer dry. So for one hour of work I'm pretty happy and the fact that I took this print that was sitting on my desk for good god I don't even know whenever I finished printing this thing and now it's essentially ready for me to put some finishing fill work on and then I can paint it maybe this weekend pretty incredible but as always I appreciate you guys so much for watching and if you have any other questions leave them down in the comments below and I will catch you guys next time bye